Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for staying. Um, these are my conflicts of interest, and I would like to uh, say that part of the research I will show you has been supported by some uh, companies uh, dealing with mechanical ventilation. Uh, so when we talk about intrinsic PEEP, I think uh, it's important to understand first what is intrinsic PEEP and which could be uh, the effects of intrinsic PEEP, exactly what is the relevance of intrinsic PEEP, which is quite different. The effects are quite different if we consider uh, intrinsic PEEP during controlled ventilation and during assist ventilation. These are two uh, quite separate items. Uh, intrinsic PEEP is the pressure that remains in the alveolus at the end of a normal expiration. So, for example, here you can have a, an intrinsic PEEP of 10 centimeters of water. And by the very nature of the way intrinsic PEEP uh, is generated in the COPD patient, this intrinsic PEEP can be offset by an, an extrinsic PEEP applied to the ventilator. Or you can look at it the other way around. You can decrease the PEEP on the ventilator, but nothing will happen in the uh, alveoli below a certain pressure. So the uh, image that is frequently used for that is that of a dam where you have a lake on one side and until the water on the other side of the wall does not get to the same level as in your lake, the uh, level of the water will not increase. So meaning that un we have a given pressure in the alveolus and the alveolus will never drop below that pressure. And once we uh, compensate that pressure with the uh, uh, PEEP we apply on the ventilator, at that point also the alveoli uh, will start to see this pressure we are applying on the ventilator. Uh, this is a classical example of intrinsic PEEP. This is a patient ventilated between 0 and 35 centimeters of water. Normally, when you increase PEEP, peak inspiratory pressure will increase, plateau pressure will increase. But here, you see that there was a PEEP increase here, a PEEP increase here and here, and nothing happens to the peak pressure. This is because there was an intrinsic PEEP in the alveolus, and the alveolus will never be below these five centimeters of water pressure. As soon as we overcome this pressure, then the alveolus will see the pressure in the airways. And so also the peak pressure will increase, and only at this stage, the peak pressure, the, the volume of the lung will increase. Once again, you can look at it also the other way around. If you want to decrease the lung volume, you cannot do this just by decreasing PEEP because the, the alveoli will do not deflate below a certain level of PEEP. Uh, this is an image we've published on the Blue Journal with uh, Tommaso Mauri uh, a couple of years ago. It's done by electrical impedance tomography. You see, this is the airway pressure, and it's clear that uh, below a certain level of PEEP, uh, of extrinsic PEEP, um, peak inspiratory pressure is not decreasing anymore because we are trapping gas in the lungs. And so this is the lung deflating down here in green. We start from a baseline, we decrease PEEP, and there is a certain loss of volume, which we see here in green. Decrease PEEP, the volume decreases more, but then at some point, we the, the lung volume stops decreasing because we are trapping gas here. So this is the, I would say, classical uh, intrinsic PEEP in the mechanically ventilated patients. Once the patient is on controlled ventilation, the main effect of intrinsic PEEP is the distension of the alveoli. So uh, clearly, plateau pressure will increase, alveoli will be distended, and that, that's the mechanism uh, by which COPD patients end up in emphysema. And of course, we will have a pneumodynamic effect. This is a, a study from uh, about 20 years ago by the group of Anthony Artigas, where he studies the effect of the hemodynamic effect of application of PEEP in COPD patients. So they would start from a PEEP of zero, an extrinsic PEEP of zero centimeters of water, and then apply six and 11 centimeters of water, where this column in the middle is the PEEP that compensates exactly the intrinsic PEEP of the patients. And indeed, you will see that from uh, uh, the PEEP of zero to these uh, uh, increased in PEEP, uh, 
uh, peak, change, uh, peak pressure changes not much. What happens to hemodynamics? You have a, a long list of abbreviations here, so just look at cardiac output. You see that even if we apply five centimeters of water of PEEP, nothing happens to cardiac output and nothing happens to, for example, uh, the pressure in the um, right ventricle. Though when we overcome, when we exceed the intrinsic PEEP and we apply four centimeters of water more, at this stage, we start to see some hemodynamic impairment caused by in, uh, application of PEEP. So this is just to summarize the main effects of uh, intrinsic PEEP during volume, or during controlled ventilation, which are related, as I said, to distension of the lungs and to the risk of hemodynamic impairment, because intrinsic PEEP will act on hemodynamic exactly like extrinsic PEEP does. However, I think uh, I personally <laughs> find um, a little bit more uh, intriguing the mechanism uh, of intrinsic PEEP during assisted modes of uh, ventilation. As we all know, uh, intrinsic PEEP can lead to an increased work of breathing. Why is that? This is the alveolus of a patient that has a six centimeters of water intrinsic PEEP and the PEEP applied on the ventilator is zero. The patient starts to breathe, he generates a negative pressure, but he has to overcome the intrinsic PEEP before he is able to receive any flow from the ventilator. And so as soon as he overcomes intrinsic PEEP, at this point, the flow will come from the ventilator to the alveoli of the patient. If we now apply an extrinsic PEEP on uh, the airway of our patient, patient we will help uh, the, the respiratory muscles because as soon as the breathing effort begins, there is already a pressure gradient from the alveoli which are still stuck at six centimeters of water uh, between, sorry, the alveoli and the airways. And so the flow will start earlier. And this is a classical example showing you uh, how you might detect intrinsic PEEP by looking at esophageal pressure. Uh, here the patient starts his or her breathing effort and until the level of pressure which is inside the alveoli is not overcome, there will be no positive flow. So this pressure drop is spent to uh, counterbalance intrinsic PEEP. And so you see in this case, this patient is wasting at every breath six centimeters of water of pressure just to generate flow. So we uh, uh, studied this problem uh, in 10 mechanically ventilated patients. Actually, not all of them were COPD, but uh, it's something you end up seeing frequently in uh, uh, many ventilated patients, even young, without a story and history of, of uh, COPD. Uh, we compared pressure support and NAVA, and we studied uh, sequential levels of extrinsic PEEP applied to the airways, so from, uh, sorry, from 2 up to 14 centimeters of water of uh, positive end expiratory pressure in pressure support and NAVA. What did we find? First of all, we found that uh, the application of extrinsic PEEP would lead uh, would, led, uh, sorry, would lead uh, both in pressure support and NAVA to a decrease in the auto PEEP, which you can, or intrinsic PEEP, uh, which you see here as this, once again, drop in esophageal pressure. And this is an expected result, but it's just to uh, show you that our population behaves like uh, what you would expect. We've also shown that this level of intrinsic PEEP is mirrored. We had both EDI catheter and esophageal catheters in these patients is mirrored on the EDI, which is exactly or almost uh, symmetrical to the esophageal pressure. And as you see here, we have a given level of EDI, which we called intrinsic EDI or auto EDI to uh, comply with the reviewer's request that we that the patient has to generate before he is able or she is able to uh, trigger the ventilator, and so you see that you can actually see the same phenomenon of the decrease of intrinsic PEEP 
by looking at these intrinsic EDI or auto EDI, which is just this uh, level of EDI that you have uh, once the flow starts. And not surprisingly, there is a tight correlation uh, between the level of intrinsic EDI and the level intrinsic PEEP, so much so that one of the conclusions of our work is that uh, esophageal pressure is out of discussion, the gold standard to track the uh, spontaneous breathing activity of the patients, but if you want, you may want to use uh, uh, EDI catheters as well, leading to uh, similar findings. Another finding of our study, when we uh, looked at uh, this uh, um, increase, uh, increase of extrinsic PEEP applied, is this one. This, on this line is the peak level of EDI or peak level of PMOS. So uh, basically is the uh, peak level of inspiratory effort during every single tidal volume. And what you see here is that as soon as we increase in the extrinsic PEEP, the uh, inspiratory activity of the patient decreases because he has to waste less pressure uh, to overcome intrinsic PEEP. And so overall, the total level of pressure that the patient needs to generate is lower. So you see, for example, here, you have 10 centimeters of water of uh, peak inspiratory pressure, uh, and which, as soon as we apply extrinsic PEEP, drops down to six uh, centimeters of water. So really, applying an intrinsic PEEP allows to improve patient ventilator synchrony and to decrease the total work of breathing of the patient. Another way of looking uh, at uh, the presence of uh, uh, intrinsic PEEP by an EDI catheter is to look at here the delay between the onset, once again, of the uh, EDI signal and the inspiratory flow. And roughly speaking, uh, we've seen that when this delay over is above 80 milliseconds, then we start to have quite, I would say, clinically significant relevant uh, levels of intrinsic PEEP. And, well, this is just to show you that that uh, increased peak in uh, uh, PMUSC and EDI, which I've shown you before, is not just due to a better mechanical property of the lungs, but is, it is really due to the presence of the intrinsic peak. Uh, another, um, maybe it's not funny, but interesting thing we've seen is how uh, intrinsic PEEP uh, has some uh, strange effects on ventilation such as NAVA, which clearly, as I've shown you, improves the patient ventilator synchrony when the, uh, when the neural trigger is used as opposed to the pneumatic trigger. But sometimes, if you have intrinsic PEEP and NAVA, you could see some strange uh, waveforms in the airway pressure like this. And it took us a while to realize why, was the, why this was the case, but the patient has a given intrinsic PEEP, meaning that the pressure in the alveolus is higher than the PEEP. So for example, is let's say uh, eight centimeters of water, while here we have four centimeters of water in the ventilator. Then what happens here at this point? That the ventilator is detecting a neural trigger coming from the patient. So the ventilator realizes that it has to deliver flow because uh, it has been triggered. And so it closes the expiratory valve, but as soon as this happens, we see the intrinsic PEEP. The airway pressure goes up because of the intrinsic PEEP. And so that the ventilator has to wait for a while, allow the pressure to go down, and then it will give flow again. So it's a rather strange uh, pattern, very typical of, uh, of NAVA, but uh, if you are starting to use this ventilatory mode, especially in patients with, uh, with COPD and intrinsic PEEP, you might uh, see it. Uh, the, the most, uh, I mean, the worst condition uh, causing, um, which is caused by intrinsic PEEP is the, present of, is the presence of ineffective efforts. Uh, so when intrinsic PEEP is that high uh, that the patient is not able to trigger the ventilator, the ventilator will recognize only every other 
for example, a trigger coming from the patient. And so here the patient is trying to trigger the ventilator, but the only thing he is able to achieve is a bump on the flow curve because the, the, over, the auto peep is too high to be overcome. And so getting to the conclusion, uh, Intrinsic PEEP is certainly relevant uh, in COPD and non-COPD patient. It's relevant both during mechanic, uh, controlled ventilation and assisted ventilation, although the effects are ultimately different in these two conditions. And uh, I think that the possibility of monitoring intrinsic PEEP by esophageal pressure or uh, uh, EMG are getting closer and closer to the bedside. And so hopefully we will be able to understand more and use it more uh, these tools in our clinical practice. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.